All right. Well, that was a lot of job descriptions. And um, of all the job descriptions that basically fit my, uh, fit my practice, I would imagine comics would be the one. And for me, this is what, where it all started, 1996, uh, New World's Anthology, where I co-created a world of uh, two different alien races, basically trying to survive. And this gave way to ghost stories, you know, just stories where it uh, took place on an abbey uh, in the French, during the French Revolution or in a graveyard um, in Savannah, Georgia. And being able to bounce from subject matter to subject matter like this was, again, an amazing experience for myself as a storyteller. Uh, this is my vampire phase where I was able to do um, uh, illustration work for White Wolf Games and Vampire to Masquerade. My brother, by the way, uh, never looked so cool in a leather jacket, uh, leaping over buildings. Um, but um, it's one of those worlds that I had the ability to also partake in. This also led to my zombie phase, uh, where all of a sudden we have hunters uh, basically taking out uh, zombies of every kind on every part of the globe. Um, and again, uh, it's just one of those great experiences because when you're trying to tell these stories, whether it's through a single image or multiple images, like in this case, my 1920s adventure stories, uh, that kind of sort of mimics, you know, like uh, Tommy guns and uh, biplanes and, you know, uh, folks who deal with magic. The key to it is to immerse yourself in these worlds, no matter how different and how varied they can possibly be. So this led uh, eventually to a high watermark in my career, which is working for DC Comics and, and Batman, uh, or on the Batman character specifically. So being able to jump into the comic book world uh, was just a treat. Um, growing up with this character uh, from, you know, Adam West and Burt Ward, uh, but doing obviously my take on it. And this is a series called Officer Down that I created seven covers for. Uh, they all take place in the same alleyway, and, but more importantly, they tell a story. So the alleyway itself becomes uh, another way, uh, another character, you know, to, to tell, again, uh, the story of, of Commissioner Gordon uh, eventually retiring from the force. Uh, here uh, is from the Versus card game and shows you some of the other characters I was able to play around with from Dark Side to Superman to Black Canary and so forth. But again, you know, it's a fantastic world, in a world where anything's possible. People can fly, uh, people have, you know, amazing abilities. And so going back to basically the real world uh, with Queen and Country uh, by the great uh, Greg Rucka about this spy uh, who basically has to live uh, or work in MI6 and isn't, you know, obviously the happiest person in the world. Uh, again, that allowed me to kind of sort of really think about quieter stories when all was said and done. And all this work is collaborative work, you know, from Queen and Country to Skinwalker on the right-hand side. And with Skinwalker, it's a procedural where I basically, you know, track a, uh, tra uh, track a serial killer who is able to change his visage every time he kills. And eventually this comes into my own storytelling, where uh, I created a supernatural thriller called Bonds, where this young hero, her father is, uh, is assassinated, and it's up to her uh, to basically track down and bring to justice you know, the folks responsible for his death. But in doing so, every soul that she uh, snuffs out uh, ends up being a tattoo on her body. And so as this story continues, uh, there's more and more uh, of, of her body that gives way to again, you know, these, these marks. And so it's her job to basically uh, come back from this, you know, somehow to figure out a way uh, to redeem herself, you know, so that again, um, everything is, you know, equalized. Um, and this was a really difficult story to create. It took a long time, there was a lot of effort that went into it. Um, but it was just a great, you know, training for kind of the next phase of my life, uh, which uh, works in conjunction with uh, my wife, uh, Gwen Thompson, the super talented uh, you know, uh, cartoonist herself uh, in Beautiful Scars. And here is a story about a grandfather and uh, his granddaughter. And the grandfather has these scars along his body. And by telling the stories on how he received these scars, the granddaughter's mind and imagination opens up. And so here you'll see uh, how the book basically is created on the top tier um, is his recollections from World War I as a fighter pilot. 
and her reaction to his stories um, in the bottom, which basically deals with princesses and dragons and knights and uh, trolls when all is said and done. And what makes these stories, at least for me, work you know, is being able to put yourself you know, into the subject matter as deeply as you can uh, through research uh, and, and through imagination. One part research, one part imagination. And you know, with the planes, for example, your planes had better look like World War I planes fighting or else you're going to hear it you know, from, um, from somebody. But more importantly, you know, uh, or just as important, you know, the dragons, for example, and the princesses, they have to feel like they live and breathe. You know? And in the sequential format in comics, you have the ability to do that, where you can actually tell these wonderful stories and just you know, and share, I think, you know, with uh, your readership um, you know, the adventures that you yourself are going through. When all is said and done, I feel that um, it's a bit of escapism for sure, but when you escape from this reality, where do you go to? Well, ideally, you go to another reality. And the reality, again, that you, that you escape uh, to is so profound and so deep uh, that it becomes absolutely real. And the only thing that you need to do to tell your stories um, and to share them with another audience, your passport you know, to these, these make-believe lands of superheroes and vampires and adventurers in the 1920s, all you need is a pencil and a paper and uh, the ability just to write them down and to share them. And in doing so, um, I think the world can be a much better place. So thank you for your time. And that's my presentation. <laughs>